And welcome back. You're watching part 2 of chapter 13 of my Thracia 776 Let's Play. This is Model Omega, and thanks again for checking on in. Where we last left off, Leaf and his army were heading over to Tara to help protect it, even though it appears that Tara itself can be defended by one middle-aged man with a stick riding a horse because throne bonuses. I'm actually amazed how much use I've been getting out of Leafus, despite the fact that, well, he's level 20 now, so I don't really have a point to using him, unless I just need to steal things. But, you know, the fact that he actually weakens enemies very efficiently for other people, and the fact that he has zero PCC means that he almost never steals kills, and he's a freaking Ballista Magnet, which is admittedly not super great, because he actually eats them not so well with his low luck, meaning they have a high hit rate, but he has enough HP and defense to get soaked several hits. It's better than, you know, Leaf being a Ballista Magnet, you know, because <laughs> he has a, an actual chance of dying, but Leafus is a bit more sturdy in this case. For some reason, this boss decided to attack us with his poison bow instead of the actually deadly killer lance. I don't know, maybe he was just at the edge of his movement, but this just means it's going to be even easier to take this guy out. I mean, now he can't even defend himself anymore. When you stop and think about it, Thracia 776 is the game that really lets you mess around with the stuff that other Fire Emblem games usually seem to not give you a lot of room to move around with. I mean, you can get psychic staffs in like the seventh chapter of this game. They give you long rant magic tomes like No Tomorrow as long as you can use them. I mean, that's just unheard of. And it really speaks that even having all the stuff at your disposal, this game is still really, really hard. And, oh, look at that. Leafus stole the guy's killer lance, so I mean, if he had decided to attack us with that, it would have only been an issue for one turn. And, I mean, I get a lot of killer lances over this game because a lot of enemies start using them, but they don't get a lot of use because indoor chapters and... I don't know, this game just has something about lance users. I mean, the only two units in this game that can even use lances indoors have an E rank in it. One of them being Doshin, if you promote him, who only starts in an E rank, and the other being a very late game general of Leinster, which uses lances, and yet he only has an E-rank. Something's fishy about this, but I can't quite put my finger on it. You know, I just noticed... The King Sword is just a recolored Brave Sword. I honestly never noticed that until now. Mainly because I probably never see it, but yeah, it's just a Brave Sword that's kind of orange, rusty color. How did I not pick up on that? I mean, it makes so much sense. They're basically the same weapon. They both have the Brave effect, but the King Sword gives you the Charisma skill and has a crit bonus, and also, I think, slightly lower hit and might, but yeah. Huh. Remember all the way back in Chapter 10 when they were praising the bravery and honor of the Frieze generals, like Largo? Yeah, I'm not seeing it. At least between this guy and Kemp. And others we'll see down the line as well. They make them out to be, like, honorable, good people, but the game just is totally conveying the opposite direction in that regard. It makes me think that most of the Frieze's are just elitist jerks which is probably not too removed off from most nobility in general, but especially in this game, at least.
I am being super careful with allied units perched on escape objectives after a pretty humiliating loss I suffered in Chapter 9 when I hit my button too quickly and accidentally had Sulfina escape from the map while she was basically completely surrounded. It wasn't a pretty sight, and I, you know, I cursed the game, I cursed myself, I, oh, it wasn't a pretty sight. You wouldn't have wanted to be around me then, and I didn't play the game for like a day afterwards, because why is exit put at the very top? Also, when the boss is taking out, all of these guys instantly just start fleeing. It's actually pretty weird, and I don't know if this is also triggered by the boss dying or after a certain amount of turns, but... After either of those events, whatever it is, those three armors at the top will basically can start spawning. And three enemies will spawn there pretty much every turn forever. I don't think it ever stops. And if it does, it's like after like a hundred or so turns. So there's that. You can get a lot of experience off these guys, as I plan to do, but just keep that in mind. Sucks about the ballista, though. They can't flee because they have no movement. I really, really want the Bullet Stations from Shadow Dragon to come back. I really do. Here I done goofed because I miscalculated how much damage it would take to actually take this guy out. I should have used the Long Lance, but no, instead I used the Iron. I don't know, maybe I was thinking I'd get a critical or something. Well, <laughs> made me look like a fool, though. Anyway, I really hate to cop out like this. But there's really nothing else to talk about in this chapter. There's no real extra strategy to use besides just hold off the guys on the top left and the right and little pathways on the hillside up to Tara and just feed enemies until everyone escapes, basically. That's all there is to it. So I'm just going to speed up as much of this as I'm going to. There's one part where there's going to be a conversation that I'm going to slow down. But aside from that, I'll see you guys later. Thank goodness. Sulfina, you came as well? Yes, I heard about Tara and came with Lord Leaf. I'm so glad I found you. I'm sorry I worried you. But Sulfina, I have led many young men to their deaths once again. I can't help but regret and wish that I had more power. No, you are the finest knight in Leinster. I am proud to be your wife, so don't blame yourself so much. Thank you, Sulfina. I feel better after seeing you. Oh, here, take a look at this. What is this? Is it? Is this the legendary Brave Bow? It looks like it. I came across it by chance. I bought it for you. Would you use it? Of course. Thank you, Glade. And there you go. The absolute best bow in the game. Seriously, it's really damn awesome. <laughs>
Line Owen, I found you. Leaf, you really came. Oh, dear God, I thank you for your kindness. I'm sorry, Len Owen. I should have come earlier. I never thought that the city I grew up in would be in such turmoil. All because of me, your father. No, it's not your fault. My father made his resolve when he welcomed you in the Tara. He was not afraid to give up his life to make way for a new world. I am proud of him. His death saddened me, and Imperial oppression was harsh, but I lived through it hoping I would see you again. But now, I have put thousands of Tara's people in danger. I just don't know what to do anymore. It's all right, Len Owen. Don't worry. I swear that I will protect you in this city. And that's a wrap for Chapter 13. Again, sorry I had to speed up so much of that, but there really wasn't anything to talk about. If I had someone else with me doing commentary, this wouldn't be an issue, but... None of my friends are available because they haven't finished their finals yet, but I have. But anyway, thanks for watching. This has been Model Omega, and I'll see you back with Chapter 14. Open fire. Thanks for watching.